Hey, hello everybody, Tinfoil Hat Lady here. Oh, coming into focus. Here I am in front of the Osirian, which is one of the most ancient temples on the planet, perhaps from the pre-cataclysmic times, and I mean 13,000 years ago or more. Look at those giant megaliths <laughs> right behind me there. In the shaded triangle underneath that pillar is the famous Flower of Life. And um, as you know, I was there in April Tour guide was Yusuf Awan, son of Hakim, who is the oral tradition keeper of a land called Kemet, which we know is Egypt. Now look at that join there behind me. Uh, how the put that lintel on the top of the pillar there. There is a legend that maybe Plato uh, learned geometry. Uh, I'm sorry, Pythagoras learned geometry here. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is uh, some of the ideas from Kemetology. And, uh, excuse me, <coughs> like I said, our tour guide was Yusuf Awan. And we also had some wonderful speakers. Christopher Dunn, the engineer, and Giza Power Plant is his book. Uh, but, of course, who studied with uh, Hakim for 16 many years, I think, Stephen Meller, who's written a fabulous book about the land of Buwizer in ancient Kemet. And it's called The Land of Osiris. And it's a wonderful book. I highly recommend it all about the time when there was a lot of water in this area. And uh, he also wrote a second book about the advent of religion, post-cataclysmic times, uh, from light into darkness, and the five sun cycles, and how we're going through an awakening right now. Uh, but if you want to tour uh, Egypt, Yusuf Awan is your man. <laughs> and here he is at the Ramesseum. All right, Kemetology, ancient Kemet refers to a very ancient civilization of which oral tradition keeper Yusuf is directly descended. And the terms alchemy and chemistry are derived from the land of Kemet. El Kemet. El Kemet. <laughs> the band of peace, Boo Wizard, the Wizard of Oz. Uh, all these things uh, are in our consciousness, um, I believe, because uh, this is sort of, of the ancient, quote, quote, Atlantis. Cataclysm wiped it out. High technology was available here. And this is the man himself, Hakim, who's not with us. He wested, set it like the sun in 2008, Yusuf's father. And this is the famous man that uh, Stephen Mellor studied with. I was lucky enough to meet some of his family members. Egyptology or Kemetology. So the, the term Egypt itself, Hakapata, there was a capital of Kemet called Memphis. Memphis came from a word called Menefer, generation of harmony, which has to do with the pyramids and the bioenergy that they created. Uh, so uh, it was uh, the place where the projection of Pata manifested. And uh, this is again the country called Kemet. The Greek transliteration of Hakapata. Egyptos is what we um, developed into the word Egypt. A lot of our knowledge of Egypt uh, traditionally comes from Greek. So chemetology is just a, you know, a little deeper and a little different than what we've been taught, and it's full of uh, uh, wonderful information worthy of study. Gametology.com can help you with that. So Kemet existed before the end of the last ice age and perhaps there was a uh, cataclysm, you know, resulting in planetary environmental shift. And you can see the remains of Kemet, uh, proof for the advanced technology employed in red granite, alabaster, calcite runes and artifacts um, that Yusuf can show you yeah, right in the field. Um, some of the science that Kemetology uh, used for basic uh, light, water, background radiation, crystal, um, piezoelectric effect, bioenergy. It's good for the biology and uh, it also accesses a free energy, I believe. <laughs> now, um, they had a thing called 360 degree consciousness. The Baha'i sort of have something, uh, 360 names of God or something I found out later. But I made this little chart because I only know my five senses in my physical body. But I teach about the spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical body. So I thought, well, okay, where are these 360 gods and goddesses of Egypt, which the commissions think of as types of consciousness or our natures? So I made this chart and broke it down. 180 female, 180 male the 360 degree consciousness. And as the chart says, there's 90 in each of our bodies, 45 male, 45 female. So that's something to think about. How would those natures manifest in you? What are those natures? I think that's for you to decide. That's for us to collectively um, reflect on and decipher, remember. 
And each of these temples in ancient Egypt was tuned to specific netters. So you could go and commune with that aspect of yourself and know thyself. <laughs> um, that's where the Plato thing came in, I guess. So this chart came to me in the bathtub. I don't know if it, it, it's really the truth, but I was just thinking, how could I, you know, intellectually chart out these 360 degrees of consciousness? Gives us something to reflect on. We're a little intellectual in the West, at least I am. I'm a little analytical. I like to have a chart or something. It must be my Virgo moon. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for listening today. And um, I'll be sharing more information as it comes. Uh, this is uh, a wonderful day. It's beautiful fall. I'm getting ready to go off to work, but I wanted to make you guys a quick video because I promised, and again, here's Miss Zuzak with my beautiful makeup. <laughs> and again, happy Kefir. It is the awakening, the dawning. Uh, the first sun is upon us.